Hi, in previous classes we discussed the body of fermenter. The body of fermenter can be made up of glass or stainless steel. In this video I am going to talk about parts of the fermenter. Most of the internal parts of the fermenter will be discussed in this session. Every fermenter should have some mechanisms for temperature control. In a fermenter, when, as the microorganism grows, the temperature will get accumulated. The temperature accumulation is due to two different reasons. First one is microbial metabolism. Microbial metabolism is exothermic in nature. So, as the microorganism grow, temperature will get accumulated in the fermenter. As the size of the fermenter increases, the accumulation of temperature also increases. So, if the temperature rise above the optimal temperature of the microorganism, the microbial growth will get inhibited and the product formation will also get inhibited. To avoid that, the fermenter should have some mechanisms to control temperature. Second, size of, uh, second reason for temperature of heat production is agitation. Most of the fermentation has, has agitators to mix the fermenter. So this agitation due to the friction, it also generates heat. So in order to maintain optimal temperature throughout the fermentation, all fermenters should have some mechanisms for temperature control. If you are using a laboratory scale, very small scale fermenters, it may not be that necessary, but if the size is high, if we are using a pilot scale or an industrial scale, it is absolutely necessary that we should have some mechanisms for temperature control. And in generally, we can use four different methods to control temperature. First one is in water bath method. If our fermenter is too small, we can actually put our fermenter in a water bath to control temperature. So either we can increase temperature or decrease temperature based on the temperature of the water bath we can control the temperature of the fermenter. It is applicable only to very small scale fermenters just like we are putting conic flask in the water bath we can actually put small scale fermenters in the water bath. Secondly heating oils sometimes uh, at the beginning of the fermentation, fermentation our microorganism may need higher temperature, higher optimal temperature than the room temperature. So in order to heat up the uh, media, uh, uh, heat up the fermenter media, so we need heating oils. So heating oils will be inserted in the fermenter so that the temperature can be increased. Thirdly, we have heating or cooling jackets. It is the outer covering uh, of this fermenter, which can be either be used for heating or cooling. Uh, most probably there will be some coolant uh, passing through these jackets which will aid the uh, temperature control. And finally we have cooling coils. Cooling coils are just like heating coils but it will help to cool down the fermenter. So temperature control can be done using four different mechanisms. In water bath method, heating coils, heating or cooling jackets and cooling coils. Here we have an equation which represents how much heat need to be removed from the fermenter or exchanged from the fermenter. Sometimes we need to add heat to the fermenter to get the optimum temperature if the temperature is below the optimal level and in most of the cases the as the fermentation progresses heat will accumulate and we need to cool down the fermenter. In those cases we need to take heat from the fermenter, we need to cool down the fermenter. So the question is how much heat is need to be exchanged uh, with the fermenter and this cooling or heating coils. So uh, here is the equation. Uh, the heat need to be exchanged is called a Q exchange. It is constituted of actually six dis uh, different components. Three different components are adding heat into the fermenter and three of them are responsible for removing heat from the, uh, from, from the fermenter. So the components which add heat to the fermenter which will help to heat up the system including QMET which stands for heat generated due to microbial metabolism, QAG, QAG is heat generated due to agitation and QGAS uh, heat generated due to the uh, like aeration okay gas uh, uh, like we are introducing gas into the system using aeration system. So in a fermenter, heat is generated due to these three mechanisms, metabolism, agitation and aeration. And heat can be lost 
by these three other mechanisms. First one is QAC, which is heat accumulation rate by the system. Then QSEN, QSEN is the rate of sensible enthalpy gain and heat loss due to evaporation. So, uh, in a fermenter, three things are adding heat into the system and the three other things are uh, like taking off heat from the system. And the sum of this is need to be exchanged to maintain the optimal temperature. Actually, we can calculate the heat need to be transferred uh, from the system to ma maintain uh, optimal uh, temperature by using this uh, equation. So, here is the difference between the heating oils and the jacket. It can be either used as a heating oil or a cool, cooling oil. Uh, basically, uh, the coils will run through the uh, run inside the fermenter. It will like in a circular way it will go and most of the cases it is used for cooling. So, the coolant will be passed through the system. In earlier days, we use water as a coolant, but nowadays there are synthetic coolants are available uh, which has better properties than water. So, we are using coolants. So, the coolant will come from uh, here and it will go all the way and go out. So, as the coolant passes here, the medium will be get, getting cooled. In the same way, we can use the same system for uh, heating. If you are passing a heating component or hot component or steam through the system, the medium can be heated up. This is a jacket, just like we are having a jacket out now. Uh, it is outside the system, but it is not as efficient as the coils. Here also we have an outlet and inlet. A coolant or heating, heat generating component can be inserted into this to control the temperature. Okay, next we have aeration and agitation system. One of the most important system in a fermenter is aeration agitation system. We call it aeration agitation system because in most of the cases we are using in an integrated manner. Aeration is basically to provide sufficient oxygen for microbial metabolism. Oxygen is necessary for microbial metabolism. So, in order to provide continuous supply of oxygen, uh, oxygen to, to supply uh, the oxygen, aeration system should be there. Next, we have agitation. Agitation is used to, for the uniform suspension of cells and nutrients. The focal growth and everything should be avoided using continuous agitation. So, in a fermenter, we need continuous aeration and continuous air agitation. There are some except, expect, exceptions. If you are using an anaerobic bacteria, uh, you don't need aeration uh, continuously. And if you are using a facultative anaerobic organism, maybe you need the aeration at the beginning, but then you don't need any aeration. Okay, so anyway, in the most of the systems, aeration and agitation is necessary. So, depending on the type of fermentation, we will the fermenter should have a sufficient aeration and agitation system. In some cases, aeration can provide sufficient agitation. So, in those cases, there won't be any separate agitation system. Aeration itself is capable of giving agitation in some type of fermenters like tower fermenters. Uh, like, uh, and it is especially applicable uh, for the bacterial cultures with low viscosity and fermenters with a, like uh, Low, less diameter, the slender, like uh, less diameter and uh, more height, like the height to diameter ratio 5 to 1. So it will be more lengthy and thin fermenters. Uh, in those cases, we can use aeration for agitation. There is no need of separate agitation system. But in most of the cases, there is a system called the aeration agitation system, which is providing aeration and agitation to this uh, organism. So there are four different components in an aeration agitation system. In a typical aeration agitation system, we have four different components. First one is agitator, which is the one which do the mixing. Here we can see this is the agitator. Then stirring glands and bleeding uh, bee earrings. Uh, this is to prevent the contamination. I will explain it later. Then we have baffles. Baffles are here. This is called the baffles. And we should have an aeration system to provide sufficient oxygen. So the Combination of these four things is actually giving sufficient aeration and agitation for the microorganism. So, come to the agitator. Agitator basically containing three different parts. First one is a motor, 
which is usually placed outside the fermenter it's just like a mechanical motor electrical motor or something like that then there should be a mechanical seal uh, which is to prevent contamination uh, at the same time it should allow the rotation of the shaft entry of the shaft into the fermenter and this much parts the uh, motor will be placed outside the fermenter but the shaft will be inside the fermenter so the seal is helping to maintain the uh, sterile condition and it also allow the entry of the shaft into the fermenter so this is a shaft and the at the end of the shaft we will have an impeller so the thing actually do the mixing is called impeller and this agitators has different roles in a fermenter the main role is the bulk fluid and gas phase mixing it is mixing the fluid which is containing the nutrients microorganisms blood cells etc along with the gas we are providing air the uniform suspension of air is a function of agitator if you are just giving air into a fermenter it may not be uh, like distributed evenly so for that we need an agitator air dispersion sometimes the agitator helps to disperse the air into small small bubbles when a large bubble is dispersed into small small bubbles the aeration efficiency will increase because of the increased surface area then it helps in oxygen transfer uh, heat transfer in some cases uh, like there will be a focal growth of system or we are having a heating oils or something like that in some areas the temperature will be high and in some other areas temperature may not be that high in those cases it may lead to the death of microorganism due to less optimal conditions uh, suspension of solid particles sometimes the fermenter medium may have the fine solid particles if we do not agitate it may settle down that's not good so it can be prevented by using agitators and it it maintain the uniform ambiental condition in terms of temperature in terms of ph in terms of nutrient in terms of everything the agitator helps to maintain the uniform under uh, uniform ambiental for throughout the fermenter okay so these things can be achieved by using agitators with the proper size number speed and power okay so depending on the size of the fermenter type of the medium objective of the fermentation we can select different types of uh, different types of agitators and the most important part in the agitator is the impeller as shown here this is the impeller uh, which is actually the shape and size of this impeller is very important for uh, in determining the efficiency of an agitator so we have different designs for the impellers Firstly, we have disc turbines. This is the disc turbine. Then we have vent disc. Then we have the open turbines and the marine propellers. Here are two different views: side view and the top view is here. So this one you might have seen. They might this marine propellers. It is actually used in boats and uh, ships and etc. for the propulsion. So it's a similar type of system, and these are the more advanced type of uh, impellers for specific do use like Scaba, Lightning. So this is the real world images of impellers. Sometimes they have, there are two different impellers in the same shaft, and it can come in different shapes, different shape, different size, etc. So depending on the type of fermentation, we can use different types of impellers. One special type of impellers is called the rust and disc turbines. Okay, it's a radial flow impeller uh, with a one third of fermenter diameter is commonly used. Its diameter will be one third of the fermenter uh, diameter. Uh, its peculiarity is that it is break up the airstream very fastly. So if you are giving the larger air bubbles just below the impeller, it will break it up into small small air bubbles. And the chance of air flow deadness is very low. One problem in using impellers is like sometimes the viscosity of the fermentation media is very high, especially when we are culturing the mycelial cells, uh, mycelial fungal cells, etc. So in those cases, high air flow rate is required because of the growth rate, and high hydrodynamic trust will be there. Uh, so this can be avoided by using different mechanism one of the main method used in high viscosity fermentation is using multiple impellers instead of using a single impeller we can use dual impellers 
dual impellers will have a lower and upper impeller shaft so here you can see this is the lower impeller and this is the upper impeller the function of the lower impeller is the gas dispersion it is specialized in gas dispersion so we will be using two different types of impellers in the same shaft so the lower will, one will be more specialized in uh, gas dispersion and the upper one will be more specialized in uh, like uh, bulk mixing of the uh, fermenter fermenter uh, components so in some cases we can use actually three impellers or four impellers depending on the size of the fermenter thank you so much for listening